If any of you follow me on Twitter, you know I do like to give From Software and Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and now Elden Ring, I guess a lot of hate in some ways. Although, like, I have played a fair few of these games. I'm actually playing Elden Ring right now. I played it last night. I played about 20 hours of it. Now, I think a lot of my criticisms in this video are going to stem from my experience of the community being quite toxic. Of course, a lot of channels have covered how the From Software fans often respond to calls for like easier difficulties and more accessibility. But today I want to talk about this massive backlash against black creators on things like Twitch or just black games journalists saying that From Software has taken a step backwards in the character creator because there aren't black hairstyles. Now this is a conversation that has been going on in games a lot lately. You've seen with Animal Crossing where they've added black hairstyles and there's been a conversation about that. Pokemon, the new one, the open world one, has some black hairstyles as well. But people seem to like to give the From Software games a pass. Now many people said the Demon Souls remake actually did have some good hairstyles for black people to use, but then this game specifically is one of the worst for not having many hairstyles. And a lot of people think like, oh, it's just a hairstyle, but they can't imagine like representation not being for them. But of course, like it's a more serious issue. There's tons of like actual hair discrimination from people from racial minorities in majority white countries. It's like a well-documented issue, which we're going to get into like the more serious side of it. But today, what I want to talk about was this whole issue of black hairstyles. I want to talk about the drama with some Twitch streamers and how their community have responded. And one of the most bizarre responses I've seen is that Elden Ring is set in 1400s Japan. I don't know where these people have got this from. I don't know if one of the creators has said this. And they've also talked about like historical accuracy. There were no like black people in medieval times, which of course isn't true anyway. But this game is just ridiculous and it's one of my main criticisms of the game. There is just so much random stuff in this game to complain that people wanting black hairstyles in the character creator is somehow a step too far. When you have like lobsters that shoot acid, giant crabs, eagles with swords attached to their feet, these like roaming monkey bandits who have swords and shields and like scream and jump on you. That the black hairstyles are the thing that's unrealistic and not historically accurate. Even if this game was meant to be set in 1400s Japan, which is clearly not because you can literally be like a European style medieval knight or a Japanese samurai. So I want to talk about all of these things today, but before we go any further, if you want to follow me on social media at The Cavernacle on Twitter and Instagram, if you want to support the channel, please like the video if you like what I say, perhaps leave a comment on your experience with this stuff, or maybe just Elden Ring in general. I'm going to actually have my opinion on Elden Ring at the end of the video, just in case it runs over and I can cut it, because it's not as important, but I do want to talk about this stuff. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. I want to build up as many $1 to $3 patrons as possible, and the benefits of that are getting my Nintendo Switch friend code and getting access to the private patrons Discord server, like I said in the last video. Please give me a message on Instagram or tweet at me if you become a new patron. I'm having trouble sending links out to people on it, and that should be resolved this month, but please just give me a message. And of course, join our community on my subreddit and subscribe to my second channel, The Cavernacle Extra. So before we dive into the Elden Ring side of this stuff, I just want to first quickly talk about like hair discrimination. So I remember on the first day of secondary school, um, that's probably September 2007, one of my friends who is black and his parents came from Ghana, he got sent home on the literal first day of school because they said his hair was too short. Now, I think it was like you couldn't have under free length or anything, but of course it doesn't appreciate like various cultures. It's clear the school tried to have like this uniform policy and didn't take into account like various different ethnicities and minorities hairs and this school was like very very diverse and I always thought it was like ridiculous because in primary school my friend always had short hair and no one said anything. He comes to secondary school he gets sent home. Black hair discrimination is actually like a very big thing in the UK. So there was a report in October that black hair discrimination must be banned, Equality's Watchdog told. Numerous cases of hair discrimination against black people have hit the headlines in recent years. And honestly, I do believe what happened in school was hair discrimination. I'm not sure if this guy's parents brought this to the school. I don't think they did, but it was totally out of order to send this guy home on the first day of like, obviously very nerve-wracking, your first day of secondary school. So just gonna get into this article quick to show you 
how these problems often arise. So a group of parliamentarians, organizations and writers have urged the Equality and Human Rights Commission to ban hair discrimination in schools places of work and wider society across the UK in a letter seen by The Independent and arranged by the all-party parliamentary group for race equality and education, the signatories argue that such guidance could potentially encourage the government to update the Equality Act 2010 to recognise hair as a protected characteristic, thus making this form of racism easier to sanction. Ruby Williams, a London student who was told that her Afro texture hair was too big and violated her secondary school's uniform policy, is among the signatories, and of course this is very similar to what my friend experienced back in the day, it is unequivocal that for far too long institutional policies have been allowed to push black children, adults and those of black heritage to conform and mirror Eurocentric hairstyles often damaging their natural hair, confidence and self-esteem in the process. The Equality Act Review recently found that hair discrimination is a form of racial discrimination and urgently requires legal recognition, while further research shows that more than half of black children have been sent home from school due to wearing their hair naturally or in a protective style. A research study found that over half of black people with Afro hair said that discrimination against their natural hair had negatively affected their self-esteem or mental health. Numerous cases of hair discrimination against black people have hit the headlines in recent years. In July 2021, FINA, the International Swimming Federation, rejected an application from the black-owned swimming cap company Soulcap to use their products in the Tokyo Olympic Games. Soulcap is designed specifically to protect dreadlocks, weaves, and thick and curly hair, styles typically adopted by black communities. The justification for this move was that the caps did not fit the natural form of the head. Critics of that decision felt that the rejection would affect the access black swimmers have to excel in the sports. So why I started with talking about this as like a very serious issue is because so many people online who aren't from the black community completely dismiss this like oh bro you're complaining about hairstyles and it's just the hair bro who cares about that stuff when of course this is like a very very serious issue you've seen constantly especially with like black lives matter becoming more prominent a lot of black people saying a lot of white people like to touch specifically black women's hair but also often black men as well without consent and often talk about it in like very weird ways it's definitely a thing that happens and it speaks to a wider problem and that's what we're going to talk about today is that people not being understanding or ever catering for black hairstyles and recognizing how they are different i'm going to show you this tiktok to start things off from at GoofyWise, who is a Twitch streamer playing Elden Ring at the moment, and he made a TikTok just talking about how there are like loads of different white hairstyles, but basically no black hairstyles. Black people can't have nothing nice. We got the we got the Jackson, we got the the light Yagami, we got the um, emotionally available father, the no one understands me twelve. Ah, uh, this is the white mom from the '70s. This guy has not bathed in, in at least a week. The Lord Far Card too. That is all the hairstyle. What the? F There's literally no hairstyle for a black person. There's not one hairstyle. There's not even. It, they don't even get the generic afro. What is going on? They got the buzz cut and the bald. That's wild. In 2022? That's, that's wild, bro. That's wild, bro. This guy publishes on his TikTok and a lot of other like black people were agreeing with him. And then you're going to take a look at some of the white reactionary comments. So Goofy Wise pinning the comment, I'm always just my platform to advocate for things I think are important. Representation matter. People agreeing with him, bro, Pokemon has more black hairstyles. That happens in way too many games that have character customization and people criticizing him. It's a video game. Plus, you're not even going to see it once you put armor on. Talk about first world problems. Him replying, sounds like someone who's not black in black people business. See your way out. How is a Japanese made game black people's business? This comment had me rolling. How is Japanese game going to have everyone other type of hair texture, but not one for black people? I mean, the game is set during the equivalent of the Middle Ages made by a Japanese studio, people replying, it's a fantasy world, it's not a one-to-one -one with how real life medieval times were. Having black hairstyles um, be an option wouldn't be a big deal. I mean, the game tries to keep a lot of medieval stuff, plus it's a Japanese studio, they don't really have many black people to worry about there. Not that from software sell their games around the world, and they are good enough at localizing the game where they seemingly have every type of British accent like Welsh accents, Northern English, Southern English, but apparently like 
a few black hairstyles is too much for them. You really think people in medieval times are rocking afros and waves. You really think people in medieval times had mythical beasts and adding human hair is the weird part. Did you know what medieval fantasy is? Fantasy set during the medieval time. Are you saying that black people didn't exist back then? The game is medieval. Of course it wouldn't have those hairstyles. Why exactly? Before these hairstyles existed, they existed. It's a video game based on medieval times. I've seen a lot of people calling it medieval in this thread. In Europe, bro, there wasn't no black knights. You're just fishing for problems. Problems. It's set in medieval times in Europe. There's mythical creatures, black people actually existed, mythical creatures did not. Bro, it's inspired by the European Middle Ages, and I don't think you would have seen many black people there. Bro, this game is set in the 1400s, I don't think anyone was rocking cornrows or a fade back then. Dude, it's a game set in medieval times, it's made by a Japanese game studio, you literally can make your character red. They didn't have fades in medieval times, and then Goofy Wise replied, they also didn't have dragons and mythical beasts. Oh yeah, a medieval game where they wouldn't have those hairstyles made by a Japanese studio gets shat on because of the hair you're reaching. Yes, the very top of an Asian company's list when they're making a medieval fantasy game set in Europe was representation. So I obviously covered the Lord of the Rings backlash and saying how it was erasing Anglo-Saxon culture because it diversified the cast in the new Amazon show. This is just even more bizarre. Like I don't know how you can even make the argument that including black hairstyles is somehow historically inaccurate. Obviously these guys don't even understand like history. Like you're saying medieval history. If we're accepting medieval is just a name for a time period, that applies to the entire world. I'm literally reading a book right now called The Medieval History of the World. It covers African countries, it covers Persia, it covers Korea, it covers Japan, it covers China, it covers India, it covers England, it covers all these different countries because that is the medieval period. Of course, there were plenty of black people around in medieval times, it's just a time period, but also the thought that there were no black people around in medieval times People do know, like, the Roman Empire didn't end until 1453. You guys probably know it as the Byzantine Empire and Byzantium and things like that. Roman Empire, including the Eastern Roman Empire, expanded across Africa, okay? North Africa. This was before the Arab conquest, and of course it's more like the popular image now is that all of North Africa is, like, completely Arab, even though it's not. But back then, a lot of North Africans. You had Berber groups, you had like native Egyptians, you had a lot of black people with different black hairstyles. You also had a lot of them becoming very prominent in different positions. There were black Roman emperors, there were black bishops of different congregations in North Africa. These people of course do not know history and of course there's also a famous black samurai and they made an anime of him recently so if we want to even talk about like, the japanese aspect of this stuff even if this game was just like literally trying to be like a medieval game the thought that there can't be black characters or black hairstyles in it is ridiculous but let's take this a step further elden ring is probably one of the most utterly ridiculous games when it comes to like the fantasy and the character design it literally just feels like a mashup of all fantasy ever of course there's like a lot of japanese aesthetics to it and you can clearly tell with a lot of the character design it's made by a japanese studio there are also black characters in the game nefili or nefili or however she's called i've summoned her twice and she's the daughter of one of the knights of that round table thing so that's a prominent black character in the game i don't think anyone is complaining about her being in the game but you're using the same logic to tell this guy that he shouldn't complain about there being no black hairstyles for the character creator and of course like i mentioned before elden ring's character designs are not realistic at all i just thought that godric guy who like cuts off his own hand and sticks a dead dragon head on it and starts shooting fire and there's loads of ridiculous stuff like that and there's so much stuff like that and also like i said this game is not inspired by japanese stuff i've just gotten to like that mage college that's clearly inspired by europe but the character i'm playing is a samurai with a samurai helmet, shoes and armor with a samurai sword. Lots of people are playing as European style knights. It's clear this game is not just inspired by one specific medieval culture, not to mention many ways this game is just totally ridiculous and just makes so much stuff up. That's part of the reason I don't really like it because it feels like you have all this cool fantasy stuff and then you just have a giant crab and a giant lobster that look like they've been taken from like Earth Defense Force or something. We're gonna get into this now. You can make your character look like handsome Squidward, right? You can make your character green, you can make your character blue, and people are saying that it'd be historically inaccurate 
to have a character with like dreadlocks or something. So on Twitter, another person picked up on this, um, Tasha Max saying, the Elden Ring community, weird. Why y'all upset that black people want black hairstyles? I put a period up there because I really don't care why y'all upset, y'all weird. Y'all saying stuff about the time period and being Japan. Ain't no dragons with swords and giant crabs in Japan. What are you talking about? You can literally make your skin green in the game. Are there green people in Japan I don't know about? Other people saying, it's also crazy. A lot of their favorite content creators playing the game are black. No matter how you slice it, it's trash. Hair selection was unacceptable. Tasha saying, in any game where you can customize your own character, you should be able to make a character that looks like you. Someone saying, I don't think the Japanese game developers are in that deep with American or black culture. Could it be better? Of course. It's not about culture. This is a company that tons of black creators play in their games. They know what we look like. All I'm saying is Japanese culture and the things they produce aren't generally known for catering to non-Japanese people. They could do better, but they decide to usually do things their way. That's what I'm pointing out. But the problem is, like I mentioned, there are localization teams. I'm hearing like every different British accent in this one game. And you're telling me there are no one in like the From Software outlets in, I guess, around the world that can just say like, oh, we have a more diverse audience here. Can we get some like black hairstyles that you can probably import from other From Software games where there are some black hairstyles? So someone posted in Squidward, I barely care about what my character looked like in this game since I'm going to be covered in stuff all the time. Yeah, but why not add more hairstyles? People talking about historical accuracy and then running around looking like this and of course looking like Squidward. And then someone posting the example of how Monster Hunter Rise actually acknowledged the feedback and did add some black hairstyles. Now this isn't just like one or two people complaining about it. A lot of black players have posted in the Elden Ring subreddit. Thankfully, on the conversations I've seen on this, the community has actually been pretty understanding as opposed to the, the general reactionaries online. So someone posting, disappointed by the lack of black nappy hairstyles, even Monster Hunter got this right. It's a minor gripe, but still annoying. Someone saying, it's pretty disappointing that this is still an ongoing issue in modern games. There's also another post addressing this same issue and the comments are pretty horrible. No surprise there, of course. I don't understand why people are intentionally being oblivious and downplaying how those affected feel about this. I mentioned this on a thread in an Elden Ring group because someone posted an article about it. So we're going to talk about this article from the verge later literally every response was racist i was utterly stunned how angry the white folks were then somebody talked about it i told people it's not their issue because they're white and it ain't a white issue it's a black issue that black people have to deal with apparently telling white folks black hair has nothing to do with them is racist too we were saying i want to be able to make black people that look like black people in these games my only hair option is a fade and that sucks i was really hoping that this would be the from software game where i can actually make a character that looks like me but I guess not. It just feels like a weird oversight that I wish they wouldn't continue to ignore. Still a great game though. Yeah, this bugs me too. You can get the facial features, but there are no black hairstyles and it really bugs me. And I know if we get them one day, it will only be cartoonishly large afro and shoulder length dreadlocks. So we're going to get into the article, but people like the app man saying, game critics continue to amaze me. Imagine complaining about Elden Ring's hair choices in a character creator, let alone write an article about it. Jesus dude, just make your guy look like an abomination like everyone else does. Now the act man is someone who was super frustrating i made videos criticizing him in the past for his like awful political takes especially on things like race he actually makes really good videos and that's why it's even more frustrating he's like this and of course him getting loads of likes and retweets shows there's a problem in the gaming community itself but before we go into the article that has these people so riled up I just want to talk about representation to start with so for a lot of white people like the act man or you know other people like that it doesn't really matter because every game i've ever played with a character creator or just general games are catered primarily to white players so you have a lot of people who maybe like look like you or you can pretend you are them or maybe get more immersed in the game that is not the same for black players or you know other players from other communities but black players i'd say have it even worse in a lot of these groups because you have a lot of asian games being really prominent you have a lot these days of Chinese games of course historically Korean and Japanese games are insanely popular even for Western audiences as well but of course there aren't like many African game studios making AAA games there are a couple games that cover you know African countries Assassin's Creed Origins being one of them but by and large there aren't like loads and loads of black protagonists and there aren't loads and loads of games that people playing as black people primarily like there are a couple who you play as a mixed race person in mafia 3 play as a puerto rican mixed race person in the ballad of gay tony in gta 4 you play as adewale in assassin's creed freedom cry you play as i think it's avalyn 
in Assassin's Creed Liberation, but I've probably listed like most of the prominent ones right now, and that is the problem. Even for the bare minimum, of course representation matters, so these people don't feel like ostracized or excluded like they're traditionally made to feel like in society, but representation can just be exciting, right? So obviously you guys probably know a lot of you, I have an Irish background, there are barely no games set in Ireland. Like, I really cannot think of many games set in Ireland. There are lots of Irish characters in video games. There are lots of, like, even Irish protagonists at times. But there are barely any games set in Ireland itself. So when Assassin's Creed Valhalla announced they were going to set a DLC in Ireland, I was, like, so excited to play this. And then I played it, and I absolutely loved it. And it actually gave me more desire to learn more about ancient Irish history, which I hadn't really learned too much about. And it was just so great to have that. Like, finally, here is a game set in a country I've been to, a country where all my family are from, and I really, really appreciated it. So even on that level, it's just exciting to explore your own culture for a medium that you love. And I'm sure lots of communities would love games set in their countries or focused on their communities. But this even goes for, like, more stuff. Like, for example, I love Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Watch Dogs Legion, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Because I'm someone who's like born and raised in London, I used to work in central London. But having a game like Watch Dogs Legion, where I can run around um, the city I worked in and the city I grew up in and like go to where I used to work or go to places I like enjoyed going to throughout my childhood and like teenage years and stuff, that's just really, really cool. And even with Assassin's Creed Syndicate, going back in time for a period I learned a lot about in school and being able to run around London, like climb up St. Paul's, climb up, you know, Trafalgar Square. That stuff was all really, really cool. And I'm lucky enough that games catered to me in this way, in that massive big budget games are set in cities and countries where I grew up. And Irish people have featured a lot in video games and movies and stuff like that. But for black people and for black cultures and African countries, not so much. Probably the most prominent ones are actually Assassin's Creed games as well, but these deal with periods of history. Besides like the racist element of it, it's just fun to have diversity to tell different stories, and it's just cool for those communities to either feel represented or get to explore their own culture through something they really love. Like I absolutely love Assassin's Creed, I absolutely love video games, playing this series in Ireland was basically like a dream come true for me. But now let's get into the article that has these people so wound up, and I really don't think it's anything bad at all, but of course they freaked out about it. From The Verge by Ash Parrish, Elden Ring's counter creator fails black players. I didn't expect much from Elden Ring's counter creator. From Software Games have a bit of a reputation for being kind of bad at counter creation, especially regarding skin. In Bloodborne, skin colors and textures were distinctly unnatural looking. My character was this orangey looking mess of a human and there were precisely zero kinky hair options. Elden Ring is a decided step up. Skin colors and face shading look natural. I tinkered with it for a good hour, setting my sliders just right to make an avatar that I think looks as much like me as I can get it. Elden Ring's counter creator is also technically a step up because instead of having no hair options, like in Bloodborne, they have one, an afro, and an ugly one at that. There will likely be the temptation to think this omission doesn't matter for any number of reasons, but the Elden Ring subreddit has already multiple threads of players showing off their creations. There's even a subreddit called Elden Bling, excited by by how good or funny they look, fully aware that all the hard work is going to get covered by that helmet. There are also Soulsborne communities dedicated to using character creators to make avatars of famous people or characters from other games. Black Japanese people existed, it all matters. Character creators are also a place which I am uniquely made aware of my race. Make no mistake, America delights in reminding me daily that I am a black woman and that it, through the systems that spawn and continue to define it, utterly hates me and other marginalized people. Character creators contribute to that weird feeling of awareness of one's difference through the options its developers deem worthy of inclusion. Hair is one of those options. Nothing makes me feel more different than when a game fails to include at least some kinky hairstyles. A game will, as Elden Ring does, have over 20 different hairstyles with straight hair accounting for different lengths, styles or curls, parts, braids, even the complete absence of hair, but will not include a type that an entire continent of people have. The math is not mathing. This isn't an Elden Ring problem, it's a video game problem. For many years, players of color have had to mod in things like kinky hairstyles and better, more authentic looking skin tones in order to have the kind of representation that white players get by default. 
Games with a customizable protagonist are nearly always represented with a white passing avatar, and when games do include black hairstyles, it's almost always only a fade and an afro, which are the go-to styles whenever a character creator wants to give the appearance of inclusivity while not actually being all that inclusive. So very reasonable article. I feel like most people won't have a problem with that. The author also says they love the game and they're enjoying it, but this thing specifically is just like a glaring omission. And of course, a lot of white people are not gonna think about this because their hair is represented. They are always represented in these character creators. And we're gonna get into most people try and make themselves. I tried to make myself, gave myself like the hair like mine, gave myself the beard and everything, could make someone that kind of resembles me. If I couldn't do that in a game that's meant to have this like mass appeal, can make your character blue and green, then I would be like, well, why can't I do that? Now, just gonna talk about some geeks and gamers stuff. Ryan Kinnell covered this article, didn't get many views for him, but he talks about like how bad it is, but also talks about he would try and make himself. That a games journalist was upset about though, had nothing to do with the game, had nothing to do with the gameplay, had nothing to do with the performance, and had everything to do with diversity and representation. This is always how it is. Every time a big game gets released, you have one of these activists that comes out there and they go through the character creation to see if they can find something that they deem racist. And in this case, they don't have dreads or something like that. That's gonna be the claim. They can only like enjoy something if they see themselves in it to the point where you are wasting hours at a time in the character creation for a game where you're not gonna be facing your character and they'll have a helmet on. Now I'm not saying I'm not gonna try to create a character might look like me, but create a character might look like me, it might look like me. So if you're trying to make yourself in a game, do you not see the problem? You wanna make yourself in Elden Ring, but you're annoyed that black people who want to make themselves do not have the options to actually make their real hairstyles because there aren't black hairstyles in the game. People like the Atman and Ryan Kinnell are just so stupid and ignorant because without even trying to understand the issues, like the issues I've outlined at the start of the video, like the real world issues of this stuff, they don't understand how representation actually matters because they as white people and white Americans have always been catered to in character creators and video games. But overall, like when you're hearing people talk about this, it's obviously something as white people we aren't really exposed to much. Like my first exposure to it, like I described at the start, was when I was 12 years old and I didn't really understand why it was happening. And of course, with conversations about race and how things aren't really catered to black people and how they're often omitted, whether that comes to like medical science or things like hairstyles, then it makes you realize that this is like a big problem. Now, for a lot of us, white people and you know other people who are watching this and you hear this, you take it into account and you feel like you've learned something and you wanna be part of the solution going forward. But then for a lot of nerds, they're like, well, how dare you criticize my favorite game? It's just hairstyles, bro, who cares? And of course, these people are usually white men who can always make someone who looks like them in their character creators. And the argument about this somehow undermining Elden Ring's historical accuracy is like the most ludicrous thing I've ever heard in my life, but it plays into a lot of these things with from software fans in general. So I don't want to end the video talking about this. Now, my opinion on Elden Ring is that I like Elden Ring a lot. The only other Dark Souls game I've played is Dark Souls 2. Apparently, this is the most similar to Dark Souls 2 in a lot of ways. I enjoyed that a lot. I, you know, bumped up against a wall where I could no longer progress because I found it too hard. And then I stopped playing, never played it again. Elden Ring, I feel like, is a lot easier because you can call summons. And I'm actually doing pretty well. Like, I killed Godric in three tries, but I was using the jellyfish. Some Elden Ring fans will call me a noob, but I don't care. That's the way I want to play it. Now, my problem already emerges is that Elden Ring, I think, is one of the most overrated games of all time. In that when I'm playing this game, as someone who only has, like, one experience with Dark Souls games, I just feel like it is Dark Souls mi mixed with Breath of the Wild. And I'm hearing people talk about how it's the greatest leap forward in open world games of all time. But when I'm playing it, I just constantly think about Breath of the Wild. And I'm like, this is literally how I felt playing Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild is the game that innovated open world things in this way. But again, I'm enjoying this. It's like a more serious, you know, Breath of the Wild, more customizable, better combat and everything like that. But the lore in this game is absolutely rubbish in my opinion and just really weird. Like I've had some cool moments. There was a giant before a castle and he was just like hammering his thing, telling me like not to go there or something like that. That was a cool moment. 
But then other ways, it's just really weird because of all, for me, nothing is explained properly. It's all very vague and in like almost stereotypical fashion, you just have loads of NPCs with very, very like distinct English accents talking absolute nonsense that you're never really going to work out. So that's my problem with Elden Ring. Like, I would say for me, it's probably like an eight out of 10. And I do really, really like this game. I would just say like the tens out of tens, best game ever. I would reserve them for games that really push stuff forward or games that are almost perfect like arkham city for me like not my favorite game of all time i would give that a 10 out of 10 because it's just like for me like a perfect experience for that type of video game breath of the wild i would give a 10 out of 10 for pushing the medium forward of open world games red dead redemption 2 i'd give a 10 out of 10 even though i don't personally love it like loads because of the insane detail and how it pushes the medium forward in that way and then the witcher 3 for its quest design and world building but I feel like for me, a 10 out of 10 for Elden Ring doesn't really make sense because I don't think it pushes the medium forward in any significant way because I feel like the stuff that it does that feels unique is stuff that Dark Souls has always done, like the community aspect and games like Death Stranding have you know, taken this aspect and ran with it a bit further in my opinion. But then the rest of it, the combat, the animations, the storytelling, and even the open world is very derivative of past from software games or Zelda Breath of the Wild. And I think at this point, like the animations for the characters are just so bad. Like their mouth is moving like that while they're talking and then keeps moving when they're not talking. I think the storytelling could be a lot better and I would really appreciate just being told how to do things. I shouldn't have to look up on YouTube how to craft arrows because the way to craft it is talk to one merchant at the start, buy a cookbook that doesn't tell you that it would let you craft arrows buy that and then you can craft arrows like why does it not help me with even the basics that's the ridiculous stuff and i just find the lore really weird like there's so many amazing creature designs and everything but then i just come up against like a giant crab and lobster like i said it feels like it was literally ported from an earth defense force game and also something i'd like to see in the from software game give me a world that basically isn't a post-apocalypse where every single thing in the open world is trying to kill me like why can't i have like NPCs doing random stuff like why can't there be like hubs of civilization why am I playing a massive open world game where like I said everything basically is trying to kill me and I cannot interact with anything in this open world besides killing things and I feel like a lot of Elden Ring fans as someone who is an Elden Ring fan won't be able to take that criticism because the hive mind mentality for Elden Ring fans is this game is the best thing ever. 10 out of 10. Pushing the medium forward, pushing open world games forward. Because people really, really love these games and then they take any criticism very personally because they feel like it's an attack against them. And I feel like you're seeing that with a pushback against someone just making the criticism that Elden Ring's character creator could have more black hairstyles. Same people said that about Monster Hunter, which added in a couple black hairstyles. I don't know why they react so crazy to this, bringing out the worst arguments possible. So yeah, Elden Cringe, I'd give it an eight out of 10. Fans, can you just stop being so cringe about it? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you wanna follow me on social media, at the Cavernacle on Twitter and Instagram. Support me on Patreon if you want, come join our community on my subreddit. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.